Welcome to this short tutorial that's going to provide an overview of Bar Chart's new interactive charts. During this video, I'm going to demonstrate where to find and how to use the basic controls available on our new chart. While many of the features you've been using on interactive charts are still there, things may look a bit different or they may be in a different place. Rest assured, these charts are fully compatible with your existing charts and they actually have new features added as well. So let's take a look at the basic controls. The new chart has a cleaner look using icons. The symbol box is still located in the same area and is used to change the symbol displayed on your chart. You can change the theme on the chart or pop it out to a full screen chart to make it easier to work on. The new chart also has an Actions menu where additional commands can be found. Panes can still be resized or moved up and down. Panning the chart to see older data is still performed in the same manner. You just drag and drop the chart, click the double arrows at the bottom, to return back to home. Scrolling on the chart's time axis allows you to compress the data. You can also scroll on the price axis to do the same thing. Double click on the axis to return back to home. The toolbar is located on the left side and can easily be collapsed or expanded back out. The new chart has range buttons docked to the bottom of the chart. Clicking on a range button sets the frequency at the top of the chart. These two controls give you more flexibility in viewing the chart data along with different time frames. Note that there is a new setting called dates per bar. This allows you to draw a daily chart and you specify the number of periods per bar. Here I'm going to set my chart to a three-day chart, each bar representing three days. You'll also find a new setting, Custom Intraday. If one of these intraday settings does not meet your needs, just open up the Custom Intraday setting, enter the number of minutes you would like to see per bar. Here I'm going to set it to a two-minute bar. Also found at the bottom of the chart, you'll find a calendar. This can be used to request a chart, whether it's a daily or an intraday chart, with a specific date range. Let's look at the bar types. There's a new bar type called percent change. Percent change plots the symbols percent change for the given aggregation. I'm on a daily chart, so this is showing me the percent change for the given day. This is different than the percent change scale located in the bottom right corner of the chart, which calculates the percent change for the range of data shown on the chart. Let me take a moment to show you where you can reset your chart back to the site's default. The reset button is located in the tool panel on the left side of the chart. You can choose what you want to clear or you can just reset it back to the site's default. The studies button is now called indicators. We've grouped the indicators by overlay studies, ones that will appear at the top main pane of the chart and standalone studies, ones that appear, will appear as a new pane added to the bottom of the chart. And you can always search for a study by starting to type in the words. It'll show you the different studies available. Opening the indicators modal, you can use this to modify anything. You can delete a study, or you can open up its parameters by clicking on it.
Notice that you can do the same thing by clicking on the study directly from your chart. And if you wish to reset a study back to its factory settings, just click the reset button and apply. The new charts have also made it easier for you to zoom in on an area of the chart that you want to examine. In the tools bar, you'll notice this magnifying glass. Click on the magnifying glass, drag and drop your cursor, it shows a little rectangle. And when you release your mouse, your chart's been expanded to show you the area of interest. To reset, you just click the minus magnifying glass and you're back to where you were. This can be used both on the symbol data and also on a study pane. I'm going to delete this study so that we have a clear chart to look at because next we're going to talk about comparisons. The icon for comparison is located here. We provide a list of different indices that you can compare against, or if you are a futures trader, there is a list of popular future spreads. You can also type in the symbol that you wish to compare, but for demonstration purposes, I'm going to add in two different indices. You can change the color of the plot that you want to appear. You can also identify which pane you want the comparison to appear appear in, identify whether you want to show these as percent changes, actual values, or net change. I'm going to clear my chart so we start fresh. Next we're going to look at expressions. It's located at the top here. You can select a popular spread expression. These are primarily for our futures traders. Or you can enter in your own expression using curly brackets. Again, you can apply it either to the main chart or to a new pane. I'm going to put this on my main chart. Here's IBM divided by SPY. I'm going to change that to a line chart. Clear my chart one more time. All right, next we are going to look at templates. And one of the primary reasons that you'll want to create a bar chart account with us is so you can create your chart setup and save them as templates to apply whenever you feel like it. So I'm going to open up my templates modal. Here are my templates saved in my bar chart account. There are also a number of bar chart templates that you can use uh, freely on your charts. These are free for you to use. But when you apply a template, it quickly applies it to the chart. One of the main differences here is that if you have a favorite template, you can always set that as a default to use for every single chart that you view on your bar chart account. Just click set as default and then any new chart that I pull up will use that template. You can also delete templates directly from the templates modal. And if you make any changes, maybe I, I want this to show candlesticks and I want a three month chart with this RSI study. I can save a template directly from the chart. Just give it a name. You can put in an optional description. You can say whether or not to use that as a default template in your account. And if you've added comparison symbols, you can identify whether or not the template should also include those comparisons. Let's clear this chart to start over. I mentioned before that the toolbar is docked to the left side of the chart. Let's just add a few basic tools so we can talk about them. Here I added a horizontal line to the chart. Again, you can click on the tool, drag and drop it to any place that you want. And I'm also going to add a Fibonacci retracement. 
One of the new things that you'll find with tools is that when you right click on them, they have their own little settings menu. Using that menu, I can duplicate the tool. Here, I just duplicated my horizontal line. This is great for adding support and resistance lines on your chart. Let me right click on that again. Can lock the tool so that I cannot move it around the chart. I can delete it. And you'll also notice there was a cog to open up the settings. Now I'm going to show you one other way that we can look at settings for tools. And this is the perfect segue into looking at the chart settings, which is located in the upper right corner. You click on the cog and it will open up settings for the entire chart. Let me collapse a couple things here. So it's divided into general chart settings. Anything that's contained in pane one, or in this case, it's the uh, IBM pane, and anything contained in pane two. Let's do the simple stuff first. Pane two down here contains a volume study. If I click on that, I can change the parameters for the study, change the colors, clone it, anything that you'd like to do. I'm going to go ahead and delete my volume pane. That leaves me with the general settings and everything left in pane one. I'm going to look at the general settings. Many of these settings are the same things that we saw on the old interactive chart. We've got different types of tooltips. The tooltip displays the data about the symbol in the upper left corner of the chart. You can set your grid lines, crosshair. You can identify whether or not you want a crosshair. Something that's new is that you can control the font size for the time axis at the bottom going across here or for the price axis over here. I'm going to demonstrate quickly. I'm increasing the font on the price axis to make that easier for me to read. Let me go back to... The default setting, very important for the U.S. equity traders out there. There is a data tab in the general settings. This is where you identify whether or not the U.S. equity chart that you're looking at should display the real-time data that appears at the top of the chart here. Right now, you'll notice that I'm off. The chart shows 183, 46, 47, and this is 182. The chart is showing a 15-minute delay. That's because the data at the top of the page is using real-time from the CBOE BZX exchange. I click that on, and you'll notice that my prices are now in sync, and I'll be viewing real-time data. Also, if you're looking at an intraday chart, you can turn on the extended hours for the intraday chart. That's the pre and post market data. That's the general tab. Now let's look at pane one. Pane one, this is where my symbol is contained. This is where I identify my bar type. Again, I can do that out on the chart or I can do this over here. When you change your bar type, it allows you to change the different coloring also, in regards to candles, whether it's open to close or close to close. I can tell the chart whether or not to show the previous day's prices. In this case, I've chosen to show the previous day close. I can also change the period of the chart. Instead of a daily six months, maybe I want a daily one-year chart. Finally, let's look at our two tools that we've placed on the chart. There are times that sometimes, quite frankly, a tool might get lost. It might be displayed way far back here. And unless you scroll backwards in time, you might not see it. So to make it easy to locate and define your tools, you can find them in the chart settings. I'm going to look at the horizontal line can change coloring on it if I'd like, the, the line type. 
and whether or not to show the price in the price scale. Now let's look at our retracement. I'm going to demonstrate to you something that's new with the charts. And you know, to make this easier, I'm going to delete my horizontal line. Okay, retracements. A Fibonacci retracement has all these different levels, and you can set different color options on the lines. But this is showing all gray right now. Instead of using a single style of gray line, I'm going to turn this off. You'll notice that these levels now show the colors that appear here. And when I click on Show Background, it will highlight the levels more clearly for you on the chart. This is a new feature that's available in many of the tools that show different levels like the Fibonacci retracement. There are many different changes in these charts, many new enhancements that I'm sure you're going to find and you're going to enjoy. One of those being our grid charts. I am not going to cover grid charts in today's tutorial. You'll find a separate tutorial on that. But in the meantime, we encourage you to start using these new charts. They're completely compatible backwards and forwards between the old charts. So give yourself some time to get used to the new, uh, new controls, the new UI, and before you know it, you'll be using these charts every single day when you come to barchart.com. Thank you for your attention. We appreciate you being a Bar Chart member. And if you have any questions, please send them directly to support at barchart.com and they'll be happy to help you. Thanks again and thank you for using Bar Chart.